great pride and honor that I introduce the 2009 South Africa Leatherman, my brother, our brother and mother, Yaku Lorenz. <laughs> Out of the night that covers me, black as a bed from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my uncomfortable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of fate, I hear this bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears, looms but the horror of the shade. And yet, the menace of the years binds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the master I of my captain of my soul. I am the captain of my soul. Now just remember, English is not my first language. If I screw up, there we go. Okay. So, so I'm born now in Fuerto. Good evening, everyone, my leather friends and family. I bring you greetings from your family back home in Africa. Tonight, I'd like to speak about freedom, the many different faces of freedom. Freedom can mean so many different things to so many different people. It can mean financial freedom, political freedom, sexual freedom, freedom to marry the person that you love, freedom as a journey to self-realization. Nelson Mandela proclaimed, there's no such thing as part freedom. I agree. You're either totally free or we have more work to do. To do. Yeah. On July 4th, 1993, Nelson Mandela gave his Liberty Medal acceptance speech at the Independence Hall. Tonight, I am another South African to stand before you and share with you my long road to freedom. There are so many different things I'd like to share with you tonight a few things that shaped me into the leather man I am today. I was born in a little town called Newcastle, born in the height of the struggle against apartheid. Being always told what to do and when, death just drove me nuts, so a little rebel was born. I realized at a very young age, having freedom is something I wanted and desired, and I would eventually get it. In 1978, I was six years old. I told you I grew up poor, but in South Africa, it meant that we could still have a maid that could come and clean our, our house every once in a while. Other than her, at the time, I never really met any persons of color. We also had a gardener who would come and clean our house, our garden every once in a while. And one particular Saturday, he brought his little son with, Tabu. I didn't see color. I was just too happy to see another friend to share with my toys and play in the dirt with me. By the time it was lunchtime, my mom came to call me, and she asked me, sorry, I had to start again. By the time lunchtime, my mom called me, and she asked me to come in and eat. But because of the general apartheid rule, my newfound friend was not allowed to join us. So I simply went outside, and I joined them in the shade. By the time we had to say our goodbyes, 
I remember asking my mother, who was very young herself at the time, why am I not black? She didn't know what to say to me. All I got was a smack against the head and ordered not to ask stupid questions. That would be the first face of freedom in my life, that someone could be black and someone could be white. We can sit in the shade and eat lunch together. School started, which I didn't really hate. More people telling me what to do. For, for the next 12 years, I would have very little freedom in my mind. By the time I entered high school, I knew I was different. I didn't like boys. I didn't like girls. I liked the dads. <laughs> Freedom for me came in, f in the form of joining the cadet band. It's similar to your marching bands, but more militarized. I played the side drum. Being labeled a queer for joining the band rather than military marching or firing off a rifle like the other manly boys. <laughs> we worked so much harder. We made our band a success. We won competitions. We made them applaud and appreciate us. That would be the next phase of freedom in my journey, being labeled a queer and triumphing over mindless prejudice. In grade 10, due to, serious family, due, to, due to serious battles over my sexuality, our preacher of the church came to us to assist, and I had to spend a week with him. It turned out he wanted to pray the gay away. It helped, didn't it? <laughs> During one of those long, long praying sessions down on our knees, his wife walked in and told us to switch on the television. News was reporting that Nelson Mandela would be released from prison soon. I turned to him and said, who's Nelson Mandela? The first words out of his mouth were, this is going to cause shit. This is the man I was supposed to look up to. And that was his reaction. He went on to explain to me who Mandela was, that he was a very bad man, a terrorist who killed white people. What did I know? I knew more about American politics than I did of my own history back in South Africa. Well, at least the truth of South Africa's history. A very important face of freedom, the truth. Knowing your culture and your history where you grew up in, that's your first step to freedom. <laughs> Continued family battles led me to leave halfway through my matriculation year, and I arrived in Durban on the east coast of South Africa with about $4 in my pocket, ready to start my own life. Away from my family, I had thoughts of my own. I could go where I wanted to go, do what I wanted to do, and the best of all, I wasn't forced to attend church anymore. <laughs> I, future, I enrolled in a college to, to future my studies in graphic design, and arriving late one day for the, cl the class, all the seats were taken but one. I ended up sitting next to a very attractive Indian lady who, was, who turned out to be one of my best friends for many, many years. For the first time, I could share and discuss things from, with different people. All my life in school, we were, scheme, we were being kept separate from other races. So for the first time, I could learn things from, from different people from all, all backgrounds, learning information from people different from your own. That is an important phase of freedom, and to me, it still is today, and it should be. Yeah. <laughs> Being away from my family, I could do what I wanted to do, and I went to my very first gay club. Now I need to put this down. I remember, <laughs> I remember going to my first gay club, and people were Voguing on the dance floor. Thank you. <laughs> Along with all the freedom came sexual freedom. The very little sex education we had in school was focused on heterosexuality. I finally came out to my mother at the age of 19, and after she said, well, okay, I have a gay son, just don't go and get AIDS. 
all the time and all the, all the education in school that were, that were given to us, we were told to use a condom as not to get a girl pregnant. I didn't have to think about that. But I'm not into girls. Two years later, I would be infected with HIV. That's something I live with for every day of my life. Because of other people's squeamishness and mindless prejudice, I believe I, the knowledge that I'm supposed to get, I couldn't protect myself and the man that I loved. Thank you. Moving down in Cape Town, I met Andre. Unknowingly, I infected him with HIV. And I'm sure the same goes for many of you out there tonight. Five years later, I would hold his hand as he died from AIDS. Because of people not giving me the education and the knowledge, I didn't have the freedom to protect him or myself. And that's something that people need to learn and respect. Knowledge is power. Knowing your HIV status is power. So, apartheid ended in 1994. It was an amazing time for our country. For the first time in South Africa's history, everyone had the right to vote. That is a very important phase of freedom. Many people left the country, others returned. The healing process began. In 1996, the government of South Africa asked the people what should be in their constitution. Many people made suggestions, gay, group lobbied, gay, gay groups lobbied, and in time, we received equal rights, including the right to marry. <laughs> so, I married the absolute love of my life, Herman. We've now been legally married for almost six years. <laughs> Perhaps for me, for all of you, the most important phase of freedom. And it will happen. Yes. Becoming Mr. SA Leather 2009, I was the first in Africa to, to have any leather title. Going to, Amer going to America and Chicago, entering Mr. Uh, International Mr. Leather, creating those lifelong bonds is indescribable, amazing. Here I stand before you tonight in the city of brotherly love. I'm creating new bonds, new connections, and thank you for the energy that you all share. I'm not finished. Now, before I end the celebration of freedom, there's something I need to talk to you about. Back home in Africa, there's a serious problem with the ideology that lesbians are being raped to make them, quote, normal, unquote. This is called corrective rape. I and a few of my leather brothers joined a protest march in Cape Town against corrective rape. I met a lady called Ndumi Funda, who was raped seven times. Seven times to make her normal. Five other ladies weren't so lucky. We will continue to work with our government to protect our leather sisters against this tragedy. Currently, 39 countries in Africa have a ban on homosexuality. The most prominent are Nigeria, Uganda, Malawi. Uganda recently signed a law in practice that if you are homosexual, you are to be sentenced to life in prison. That's not all. If your friends or family know you're gay and don't report it, they can be sentenced to, to, uh, to, to a prison sentence as well. We fe I feel the United Nations should step up and stop this nonsense. Yeah. 
I told you South Africa has the most liberal constitution in the world. We're very lucky. But as I stand here before you today, half, more than half of the states in America don't legalize same-sex marriages. If you want change, get active. You work together. Work to protect your rights and your freedom. The late great Nelson Mandela also said, if a man is denied the li to live the life he believes in, he has no choice to become an outlaw. I have become an outlaw. I've, along with my leather brothers and sisters, we have reached our goals, but the fight is yet not over. It doesn't matter where in the world you're from. You need to, you need to work together and fight to protect your rights. The fight is not just local, the fight is international. We are all together, we are all a leather family and support each other. <laughs> One last free face of freedom I'd like to share with you. Because of many of you in this room, I have the freedom to jump on a plane, fly halfway across the world, to share with you my story, good or bad, and to share, you my, share with you my journey to freedom, I'd like to thank you all. Now, I have one last thing to say. You might want to know who is the next face of freedom. I want each of you tonight to go home Go to your hotel room, take a look in the mirror, and you will find your answer. We are all faces of freedom. Kiali Bocha, Danki, thank you.